everybody. Good morning. I would say uh, for all of you, it's uh, it's morning, so we can start with this salutation and uh, good morning to all the fathers, brothers, and sisters that are connected uh, today for this uh, very last uh, part of our uh, course. Um, it, is, uh, it is a pleasure and an honor from uh, our side uh, to organize this uh, last uh, moment uh, with all of you. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a moment that we have also organized uh, uh, for the different uh, batches of this program. And uh, so first of all, I wanted to say that we are happy to, uh, to be with you this morning. And uh, we know that it, it has been a very, uh, let's say intense uh, journey and uh, made of a lot of, uh, let's say of learning, of assignments. And uh, I have also seen in the, in the web in the whatsapp group a lot of stress around this assignment and the certificates and uh, this also shows the commitment and the engagement from your side uh, uh, to the program and um, so today we are here uh, of course with our colleagues and friends uh, from uh, Don Bosco Tech Africa uh, who are connected uh, from uh, Nairobi uh, to uh, to be with us and it's uh, yeah, it is a, a way of uh, of uh, try to uh, uh, to wrap up a little bit our program, share some um, some uh, reflections from both sides, and uh, and also uh, eventually discussing a little bit what are the next steps uh, for this program, but also for you as uh, as managers of uh, of TVET centers. So it's a pleasure, uh, really, to uh, to be with you today and uh, to uh, conclude uh, this uh, learning journey that we have started several months ago. Uh, so first of all, it is uh, my pleasure to leave the floor to our colleagues in uh, in Nairobi. Uh, I I have already uh, seen uh, Father TJ. And uh, and so I would, uh, Father, I would leave you the floor for some uh, initial uh, uh, remarks uh, on the course and uh, and uh, on the work that DBTA is doing uh, to support uh, Don Bosco Tivet centers uh, Africa wide. So, Father TJ, without uh, further ado, I would like to give you the floor. Good. Uh, thank you, Stefano. Uh, is our camera on or is it cut from there? It is off, but uh, not, from from us, not from our side, no. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's from, okay, we are. Okay, yes, now you see us. Uh, yes, indeed. Oh, yeah, good. So, good morning to all. Good morning, TJ. Oh yeah, Max, good. Nice to see you. Eh? One of the exemplary students, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm really happy that uh, we have come to the conclusion of uh, the training for this batch. <clears throat> but, um, of course, the graduation delayed a bit. Um, because uh, you know that uh, August is the holiday season in uh, in uh, Europe, and secondly, also the group was quite big, and uh, marking your marking of the assignments also took a bit of time, I suppose. So all these things contributed to a bit of the delay in uh, in the graduation, but. Things are not bad, it's great. So a big uh, word of congratulations to all who have successfully completed uh, this program. We are about uh, 96 people in this uh, program and um, a good number have successfully completed, I would say. Yes, some sort of fell off along the way, lost interest, I do not know what happened, but in general, uh, I would like to congratulate all. And also a special word of thanks and congrats to the ITC ILO team. Um, as I mentioned, yes, 
August was a holiday time, but still I'm sure some of them were working even on uh, correcting the assignments. So that's why like uh, around mid-August, we could get the final uh, results. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and also thank you for your flexibility. You know, at times um, some of our people took a bit of extra time with the assignments and uh, you were flex flexible enough to accommodate that. And I would like to thank you in a very special way for that. And then we had uh, people from the DBTA office, especially Brother John and Anne, who were following up closely the participants, making all the linkages, communication, even communicating with the provincials, youth ministry delegates, province TV representatives to push the participants. And uh, they have done a great job. Congratulations. Um, again, thanks to the provincials and the team in the provinces. They have really encouraged the participants. And now this was the third group that uh, we have had. First, we had the English group, then French and Portuguese. Now the second group of uh, English were finishing now. And then by the 20th of this month, we would uh, start with the final group. That would be the French group. And that group is also going to be quite big. Then, OK, of course, we will have the trainer of trainers. Uh, originally planned for uh, 80 participants. Uh, we hope that will also go well. Um, then um, I would like to remind everyone that yes, for DBTA, this is something very, very important because this is part of our mandate as well as our mission. This is one of our core activities and priorities, that of empowering our TVET centers, empowering our TVET management in all our training centers. Recently, we embarked on the quality management system for our TVET centers. And that's going to be a very long process. And uh, trained personnel, especially in management, that's going to be one of the most important things for us to have real quality. And so we hope that, and my real hope is that um, um, with these trainings that we are having, uh, we are going to really improve the quality of our training. And at the end of it all, whatever we do, we know that it's for our young people, for them to have quality of life once they pass through our training centers. So once again, thanks to everyone who have contributed greatly uh, to reaching this day and congratulations once more to all the participants, especially those who have uh, completed the course successfully. Thank you very much. Okay, we, you can hear our uh, clapping, I think. This, uh, this is in digital, in the digital world, I think we just have a reaction uh, like that so that uh, we can, uh, we can ask, actually uh, look at, uh, at clapping on, uh, on uh, some remarks. Um, I think from, uh, from our side, uh, I am here also with, uh, uh, Svitlana and uh, Vera, who have been working uh, thoroughly on uh, on this course, and um, maybe I would like uh, to uh, start uh, before giving uh, the details on uh, the um, let's say on the participants uh, receiving uh, certificates. Um, I would like maybe to start with some reflections uh, from our side. 
and uh, maybe having also a short discussion with uh, uh, with uh, the um, uh, with the participants who have taken their time uh, to be with us uh, this morning. So I would uh, maybe just uh, share uh, very simple slides uh, that uh, I prepared and that is based also on uh, the reporting that we do uh, for uh, Don Bosco Tech Africa vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, this training. Uh, so this is a little bit, uh, maybe if you wish, uh, the, the trainer's perspective. And uh, it's, it's something, I mean, these are some uh, key points that we have uh, identified and uh, would like to share uh, with you. Uh, I will uh, maybe start and then Vera, of course, you can uh, come in and, uh, uh, and uh, complement uh, the points. Um, so from our side, uh, starting from the first, uh, uh, first uh, sub-module, uh, what we have seen is uh, that generally speaking, there are some difficulties in describing the TVET and skills development systems at country level and uh, see the link between the different institutions and stakeholders. And um, so uh, to have a, what we call the systemic approach and to be able to define also uh, concrete policy challenges. This is in our opinion, a, a very important point. And also there is a point on which there is a room for improvement. Uh, we, we would like really to encourage you at the end of this uh, process, to, uh, I mean, I would not use the words of Pope Francis who says to go out uh, and to open, no, but um, really uh, this, is, uh, this is something that for us is very critical as a skill for people working in the Tibet environment. So you should not uh, focus only on the internal situation, on challenges, et cetera, but you should better be, uh, let's say, updated about how the Tibet and skills development is moving uh, in, um, in your country. Better understanding how the different uh, building blocks of skills development system work in your country is, is a key in order to define uh, what is the contribution that uh, Don Bosco can give to uh, the country in which you are working, but also at the same time to identify the opportunities that are there for Don Bosco uh, in the current uh, policy context and in the current, um, let's say, structure and uh, let's say evolution of your skills development system. So we would really encourage you to look outside to better understand what is happening in your country. In Africa, and in particular in English-speaking uh, Africa, I would say on a daily basis or even on a monthly basis, there are reforms that are happening uh, in, uh, uh, in the skills uh, TVET systems. Uh, I mean, I could uh, do uh, tons of, ex of examples on how things are moving in terms of the qualification systems, in terms of uh, better uh, integrating uh, labor market information into TVET, on how financing uh, is improving. There are uh, skills development funds that have been more or less set in all uh, African countries. Um, in terms of governance, uh, very rarely uh, Don Bosco people are integrated into formal bodies of uh, uh, the TVET skills development uh, system. So I think this was the, our first point. Uh, we encourage you, we leave this also as an advice, if you allow us, go out, be in contact with ministries, with employers organizations, with other NGOs, uh, also, of course, through your participation under the overall umbrella of the church. But uh, I can tell you from also my personal experience, uh, very, uh, I mean, very often the church is very much geared towards general education and less towards technical and vocational education. So uh, these are all things that uh, you need to 
better know to better be able to describe in order to seize the opportunities that are there in terms of uh, uh, of participating to the development of the skill system but also in terms of gaining uh, uh, let's say uh, financing or other kind of incentives for uh, your TVET centers the second point is around uh, quality assurance. And I think uh, Father TJ in his initial remarks has already uh, set up, uh, let's say the, the setting for, for this comment of mine. Uh, we have seen in particular, maybe in this batch, there were some difficulties and uh, of course a needed improvement in terms of the discussions around quality assurance. So it's, it's um, of course, a very important dimension of the work that uh, you are doing as a TVET Center's manager or management teams. And reflecting heavily on quality assurance is important in order to plan and build uh, future activities uh, for the center. Uh, better understand what are the dimensions of quality, what are the indicators that you have to look after, and how you can uh, build on the current strength that your center has and or uh, try to solve the challenges that you have in terms of quality. I think this was in particularly important and uh, you know this, uh, we use the ECAVET uh, framework a little bit as a framework of, uh, of reference, but uh, here the key idea is to once again, go out, be in contact with uh, employers, be in contact with your stakeholders. Because when we are discussing about quality, we are thinking in terms of clients. We are thinking in terms of what are the direct and final beneficiaries of the work that we are doing and how we can cater for, cater for their needs and better identify actions to, uh, let's say, suit uh, their needs. The third part is a rather, uh, let's say, very interesting uh, discussion uh, that uh, we can we could see and uh, very interesting assignments from your side on uh, the manager's competencies. I think there was a lot of uh, of reflections on this topic, and uh, really, I mean, this is also something that we had uh, uh, previously um, uh, discussed or flagged also to uh, Father TJ and. Uh, the Don Bosco Tech Africa team. Uh, of course, there is a need to better understand and to better clarify and to probably also draw a kind of an occupational profile of the Don Bosco Tivet Center Manager. So we need uh, collectively as a group, but then of course, also you individually in your Tivet Center to better clarify the job description of the Tivet Center Manager which of course will be uh, probably different from case to case, also because of uh, uh, the, um, let's say the different status and situation uh, of each center, the different composition of the center's team. But really it is important, and this is also the message that we tried to convey through the, uh, through the course, it is important to clarify the tasks of the, the manager and of the management team and reflect on the competencies that are needed. Because as we have said, probably also throughout a couple of webinars uh, that we did uh, a couple of months ago, a month ago, this Tivet Center manager is a little bit like a superhero. So needs to be endowed with a lot of competencies, with a lot of skills. And this is very important uh, that we can clarify and identify which are those uh, competencies that we want to uh, the manager to have and to plan accordingly for those uh, for those developments then the fourth point that i would like to underline here is that of course and i think this was part of uh, the joint reflection that we had done through the clinics and um, and the, the different webinars that we had of course, self-financing is, uh, is uh, a big discussion. So on one side, uh, there is this understanding, and I think we, we, we got there, this understanding of a need of a more uh, entrepreneurial mindset. So here the idea is that it's not just the fact of 
diversifying the sources of the funding of our centers, but also at the same time, this needs, uh, uh, let's say, an entrepreneurial mindset from uh, the management. And uh, we also worked a little bit with some tools, uh, like for instance, the, uh, the um, uh, uh, business canvas, et cetera. The, so we, we helped with some tools on how you can reflect on what are once again the needs of your clients, what are the services that you can put in place in order to respond to those needs and really acquire and grow in a more entrepreneurial mindset. I think very fittingly, uh, Don Bosco Tech Africa has asked us to work on this topic of entrepreneurship. So uh, this doesn't mean that you will become entrepreneurs, but what is important to understand is that on one side, the TVET centers for its nature, uh, let's say requires uh, uh, an entrepreneurial mindset. And that on the other side, we need to create the enabling environment for this entrepreneurial mindset to, uh, to actually to grow. So it's not only the manager, but it's really a way in which the center should work. So it should work a little bit more as an enterprise uh, uh, of course, without losing uh, its educational uh, objectives and uh, structure. And uh, yes, on, on this discussion, we have seen also the spider graph uh, exercises that we have given. And uh, also what we would also encourage you to do is to discuss about self-financing uh, in your management team meetings. So it is both uh, um, something that you need to do as an individual, but also it is a topic that needs to be discussed uh, in, your, uh, in your center. Uh, needs to be discussed with your uh, management team, needs to be discussed with your trainers, needs to be discussed with your partners. So there is no one size fits all solution. I think we had, this is also what we came to as a conclusion uh, during our exchanges. Uh, but uh, also uh, I think uh, what is very important is to try to, uh, let's say, open once again the doors and do this discussion on self-financing together with your key stakeholders, both internally, but also externally. And the diversification of the sources of funding, we have talked about maybe a way to engage a bit more uh, for, um, let's say, for um, um, with the government in order to get public funding. We have talked about self-financing uh, in terms of income generation activities, in terms of selling uh, uh, educational services to companies, uh, in terms of also there was a discussion on the fees. Uh, will uh, can, can we have fees for, but also at the same time cater for the most vulnerable youth? So I think these are all the kind of tricky questions that you will have to, uh, to face continuously in order to uh, let's say aim at the sustainability, which is of course uh, the key uh, the key word and the key concept that we uh, we should work on. Um, another point that we would like also to underline is uh, uh, the the focus that we should have uh, on planning. So I think uh, there was a, uh, well, we had a very lively uh, webinar also with our uh, uh, colleague and friend from uh, Pakistan who was telling us a little bit. Uh, the different, uh, let's say, uh, modalities that you can have while uh, uh, talking about uh, financial planning and budget uh, development. But at the same time, I think what is very, very important is that we need to link the two. And we need to work on planning documents. So having a three-year, five-year, two-year, four-year uh, strategic plan for your TVET center is a necessary step is a necessary step in order, of course, to better work on financial sustainability. Because if we don't know what we want to become or how we want to evolve, it's also very difficult to uh, understand what are the way forward in terms of the finances. 
And uh, on the other side, we need also to continuously uh, feed our strategic plans for our TVET centers with the information that we get from the labor market. So this is key. As we have seen also in our systemic uh, approach, the idea of always referring to the needs of the labor market and being able and adaptive in terms of, uh, let's say, developing strategies for our TVET center is a key uh, is a key competency that uh, um, the TVET the center manager needs to possess in order to uh, effectively uh, carry out uh, his job. And then, of course, uh, the importance of financial planning. I think we have had uh, several discussions on, uh, on this topic. Uh, the need, of course, uh, to uh, discuss and uh, get uh, that right within the house, uh, within the, uh, let's say, uh, with the economer, with the other sectors. I think there was also uh, some discussion on, on those topics. So I think th these links between uh, strategic and financial planning is, of course, uh, very important. And then, of course, uh, last point on... Uh, on, uh, on greening TVET. So the, of course, the wonderful uh, last webinar that we have had. And I think this is, uh, this is something that we will bring uh, with us. Uh, on one side, uh, because of course of the richness of this topic in, uh, in, uh, in the Don Bosco perspective, that was also um, discussed by Father Josh. But at the same time, also the fact that when we are talking about greening TVET, it's not only about greening practices and policies within our TVET centers, but it's also about investing in green skills and green jobs. Because everywhere in the world, but particularly uh, in Africa, uh, what is really, really important is to uh, go for the green transition. There are millions of jobs that uh, have already been created and will be created on green um, let's say in the greener or in the greening of the economies. And uh, I see, uh, I mean, I, I also follow all the different uh, Don Bosco pages here and there. I have seen Don Bosco Tech Africa and Don Bosco centers in Africa, particularly active on solar, uh, on solar energy. But I think that there are many other, uh, let's say niches and uh, jobs on which we could and should train youth. Uh, with a double objective, of course. On one side, there is the economic social objective of developing skills and finding jobs. But of course, in let's say in the wake of what also Father Josh shared with us, there is a higher, I would say spiritual, but also environmental objective in working towards those kind of, of uh, let's say of professions of occupations. So I think this is a little bit what we would like uh, maybe to share with you. Um, it's just some uh, brief points, of course, uh, for a discussion. And uh, Vera, I don't know if you want to um, to add uh, anything or some uh, maybe some outstanding points uh, from your perspective. Um, good morning to everyone. Good morning, dear colleagues. Good morning, dear participants. Thank you, Stefano. I don't think I have too much to add to what you said, apart from some general comments, I would say. Uh, first of all, um, I'm um, uh, thankful uh, to, to all the participants for all their commitment, engagement, hardworking responsibility for all your efforts, learning and teaching as well, um, overcoming setbacks, um, sharing stories, experiences and knowledges and achieving success, of course and for your positivity, because it was truly an intense period. And I am um, sure, I do believe that uh, you are now, uh, when the course is over, you are very proud and happy of, your, of yourself, because you, you, you did it. Um, regarding uh, some thoughts about um, your assignments and your work and uh, the program uh, progress during the course, I would say that uh, for the most part of the participants, it was um, easy when dealing and reproducing general uh, theoretical knowledge. Uh, it was not so um, a difficulty. The, the difficulty comes and the, the real ch um, challenge uh, or issue or problem, it was when 
providing some reflections and uh, using the, the gain knowledge um, uh, for uh, and applying the knowledge in um, for in, in a certain uh, situation that was the the, the bigger ch challenge one of the challenge and another one um, to see uh, your TVET institution um, and to see the general picture or um, and to think strategically um, and to, to keep that in mind and not just only to understand that your, your TVET institution uh, is a cell of a bigger body that has to work in harmony it, as it doesn't matter how much effort uh, human um, resources and financial use, uh, resources uh, you use and uh, it doesn't matter um, you, you won't achieve um, a high performance of your instit institution unless you work in harmony you cooperate uh, with the um, the entire system and it was also very um, difficult for for some of the participants to understand uh, how to make a good use and put in practice and uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, considering all those blocks that was uh, that were mentioned by um, by stefano um, the, it was, but uh, nevertheless, it was a delight to to observe and to notice during the course that there was a good progress of um, um, of most of the participants uh, when sending their their works, and uh, uh, you were uh, offered the opportunity to send your um, to submit your uh, assignments repeatedly, and uh, thank you for using that opportunity because uh, uh, most of your um, repeated uh, submissions. Uh, works were much better. Uh, thank you for, for being stubborn <laughs> and working properly on your works. Um, and again, uh, now at the end, I want to, to thank you once again for all your efforts um, and wish you to apply and make the best use of the knowledge and experience acquired in this year learning course. Um, and here, if uh, I would like to cite Goethe, knowing is good, but not enough. We must apply it. Willing is good, but not enough. We must do it. Thank you and good luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you very much, Vera. I think that uh, you actually summarize also the spirit uh, with which we have, uh, of course, uh, organized uh, as well with our colleagues in, uh, in Don Bosco Tech Africa, this course. It's not a theoretical course. The idea is endow uh, is endowing the participant with, uh, uh, with tools, with reflections that can be then, uh, of course, uh, put into practice into their, uh, their centers. So um, I would uh, now maybe um, uh, start with, uh, with some lists, of course, the much awaited, uh, uh, much awaited uh, lists for, uh, for the certificate. Uh, as um, let's say, as uh, as uh, Father TJ was uh, saying, um, a high number of participants have actually uh, gone until the end of the of the of the training, and uh, almost seventy percent of the uh, of the participants uh, uh, will get uh, a certificate. Uh, it is also very interesting to notice that uh, out of the sixty four participants uh, that. Uh, will uh, get a certificate. Uh, mm, 42 out of 64 uh, have uh, done the whole work, so really uh, until uh, uh, the completion of all the assignments and all the uh, lessons, so uh, they will get uh, the uh, certificate of achievement. So we have given, uh, as, as uh, Father TJ was saying, it's not only holidays, but we have given extra and extra and extra time uh, for uh, some participants in order to try to, uh, to let them go until uh, the certification. And uh, I think we managed to, uh, to get uh, some uh, more people on board uh, uh, also in the last uh, few days, uh, if not uh, this week uh, already. So really, uh, thanks uh, to, uh, to our flexibility a little bit as, as TJ 
I was saying, but also uh, thanks to the commitment that all the participants uh, have shown uh, in this uh, in this uh, endeavor. So uh, I would uh, now proceed uh, with uh, reading to you the lists of uh, the participants who uh, are getting the different uh, certificates. And then I would like to maybe give the floor to uh, some uh, people uh, that I uh, are hopefully here, uh, active participants uh, and uh, uh, let's say to listen to your voice and uh, your concluding uh, uh, reflections. Uh, this is of course very important uh, uh, from for us, but is also very important uh, for uh, uh, for the course uh, in order to improve uh, uh, on this uh, let's say final um, cohort uh, that we will uh, start with the French group, but at the same time also planning uh, for the TOT. And I will come back to that uh, later on. So let me once again share my screen and uh, we will start with uh, naming those uh, who have uh, achieved uh, the certificates of participation and then the certificate of achievement. Okay, so on the uh, certificates of participation, that means people who have uh, completed uh, more than 70% of the uh, training uh, lessons of the training activities of the course, uh, but they have not uh, completed successfully all the in-module assignments and the final assignment. So we have Komi uh, Kukukamis, uh, we have Denis Hamabungu Lugereka, we have Pascal Shauri, we have Mark Quadwo Eshun, we have Emmanuel Mwambu, we have our father Uba, uh, we have Cecilia Bay Davis, Melania uh, Mboya, Stephen Egesa, Harrison Kafsiwe Mulenga Mulutula, Gabriel Casonde Mwaba Muenia, Frederick Okusu, Evans Musanshi, Gabriel Jose Hamui Blanco, Maureen Chola, Tedros Bere Haku, uh, Samuel Sorie Sesai, Efren Umandal, uh, Michael Quadwo Brafo, John Musonda, Atakelti Kasai Zikta, and Anima Rita. BCA. So I think these are the people who have uh, finalized uh, their, uh, let's say, their um, the training lessons, the training materials, uh, and uh, will get their uh, certificate of participation. I will then uh, show you a little bit a web page where you can find more information on uh, on the digital certificates that are given to you by uh, by the ITC. I will. Now let's start with the 42 uh, people who have been, uh, uh, let's say, uh, will be certified uh, with uh, the certificate of achievement. So this is a big uh, achievement also as the name of the certificate uh, will also suggest. And um, so we are very happy to have uh, uh, these people uh, certified. And uh, namely, we are talking about Christopher Peter Sharp, uh, Getu Dumesa Olkeba, Edwin Ngeoye Tangi, uh, Bonaventure Bonnet Amachab, Yace Garus, Berhanu Haile, Bonifas Nchami, Alem Seged Berhan Mender, Konstantin Jabulani, Nicolas Sibanda, Samuel Abraha Volde Johannes, Babu Augustin, Bereket Belai, Anthony Ieani. Well, now that's complicated. Father Tony, you have to pardon me, but yeah, uh, I, I will I will be uh, I will be happy with Anthony Ekezi, I think. So um Sebastian Joseph Chirayat, uh, Telma Ever Chiwanza, uh, Simon Okaya Denis. Cletus Linus Etukakpan, Eva Adede Nacindi, Surafel Kebede, Christopher Kabasu Kunda, Jawahir Faisal Kunda Abdal Rasol, 
Hung Lequoc, Irvin Masuajo Lumano, Jului Macalamba Mambinda, Mukadi Roger Mbaio, Marco Sicotti Mhara, Edivesta Mrema, Nana Muluken, Simbarasha Musa, Tendai Anna Nekatambe, Joseph Samson Nyondo, Maximus Chiquem Okoro, Sonny Joseph Potemplacal, François de Paul Rakutu Malala, Sia Richard Rimoy, Innocent Emmanuel Rugemalila, Joseph Schifare, Charles Jacob Uda Finzi Taban, Bualia Kalusha Tandeo, Joseph Taikadan, and last but not least, Tium Debesai Zewald. So these are the 42 uh, people that are going to uh, receive the uh, final uh, certificate of achievement. So I would say we should clap our hands for these colleagues who have uh, gone until the end successfully. Uh, in case uh, you would see something uh, which doesn't meet with your uh, with your um, uh, expectation, please, we will not take it now. Uh, we will uh, take it from, uh, I mean, please write an email always to skillsdevelopment at itcilo.org so that uh, we can uh, uh, treat uh, uh, those uh, different uh, situations accordingly uh, and uh, revise. But we had a, a final revision uh, really this morning. So I think there should be no mistakes, but um, we are happy to take uh, then uh, some, uh, some action if needed. Uh, I would like to start maybe a short discussion now on, uh, on the course. Uh, I would first uh, like to um, tell you that uh, the whole material of the course will always be available for you. So your access to the eCampus of the ITC ILO is lifelong. So you will be able to access all the presentations, all the material, et cetera, et cetera, whenever you want. So this is there, and actually there are, and there will be uh, also some, sorry if uh, uh, you can all mute your microphone. Uh, so we would uh, really like to, uh, to encourage you uh, whenever you would read uh, some of these, uh, um, some of these uh, materials or exercises or reflections, etc feel free to once again get into the platform, discuss, uh, take what you need and uh, discuss about it with uh, the colleagues you may want to, uh, to have a conversation with. So this will always be uh, there for you. And uh, of course, there will be more and more uh, uh, free courses in the platform that you will be able to access uh, without uh, any fees. Uh, now, I think uh, we could uh, maybe give the floor to, um, to uh, some people that have been uh, particularly active in the course. I hope they will be there and uh, maybe hear from them their views and also uh, maybe the way forward. Because as, uh, as Vera was saying, uh, the idea is not just to receive the knowledge, but it's to apply the knowledge. So how... Uh, can uh, this be applied? How do you see it? And also your general reflections on the course. I think the first one we would like to give the floor to is uh, the one who uh, already uh, Father TJ has called the exemplary, uh, uh, one of the ex most exemplary uh, students. So I saw Maximus was, uh, was there. So maybe having a first uh, voice from Nigeria uh, could be interesting to kickstart the discussion. Uh, um, just, uh, Stefano, yeah, can I interrupt a bit? I see two hands up there. Yeah. Okay. We can take also those. Uh, Bereket. And uh, Michael, I see two hands up. So yeah. you can give them whenever you feel. Yeah. 
Yes, please go ahead. Okay, please. Um, I would like to ask for clarification because on my own part concerning the names, if there can be cross check later, because I think I did all the assignments, and if mis no mistake, I got the required grades. So I will beg if you can cross check again after. Okay, please send an email to the email that was uh, written there so that we will analyze your case. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, the second hand disappeared. Okay, thank you, uh, Michael. Uh, okay, if there are no other uh, hands, maybe we could get some, uh, some insights from some of you. Uh, I was uh, suggesting to start with Max. I don't know, Max, if you are, uh, yeah, you're there. Please. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for this uh, platform. And uh, thank you to ITC IDO for the wonderful uh, online course we had. And in a very special way, we thank also Don Bosco Tech Africa for making this possible. Uh, generally, I would say uh, the course was very interesting. Uh, was very practical in the sense that uh, it helped us to reflect a bit on you know the whole Tibet ecosystem, and then also trying to put together certain aspects. Probably we never really give time to approach in a very systemic way or systematic way, you know. Uh, and then uh, the, all the exercises we, we had, you know, the weekly exercises and then the assignments were all very practical in the sense that it helped us to go back to certain documents we have, you know, uh, in our own system, try to understand, you know, and to see the, uh, the links and how to also improve our own situation. So thank you very much. It was really interesting. I find it uh, two things I would like to say about this course that really uh, struck me so much was one, uh, the way it's designed, you know, it's designed in such a way that even if you have a whole lot of things doing, uh, when you come to read, you do not want to leave until, you know, you get things done. So it was very, very uh, attractive. Let me put it, the contents were very attractive and then uh, straight to the point. Then the second aspect is the fact that it's not just very theoretical, but very practical in the sense that uh, you could we could find a lot of interaction with our own system, you know, and then also it helps us to also look beyond our own system to see, you know, what are the areas in which we can improve. And the fact that we had the ability to interact with one another also helped enrich the process. So for me, it was a, a very great experience. And then listening to people from different parts of the world, you know, uh, also in, made it very, very, very interesting. Tibet, I would say it's uh, something very beautiful, not just because, uh, you know, Don Bosco believes so much in it. We could remember our first, uh, our first uh, online webinar we had with Father Patrick, you know, trying to talk a bit about how the whole Tibet started. But it's beautiful because that is the way forward. Because if you look at our society today, you know, like, uh, sorry, jokingly, Cletus would always say, Cletus from our office would always say, said everything is Tibet, you know? Because if we really want to empower young people, if we want to fight against uh, unemployment, want to talk about skills, want to talk about them having a quality of life, you know, then be marketable. We cannot but talk about Tibet, be it in the formal or informal sector. So. I think I came into the idea knowing that it's a very good gift we can give to the young people. So thank you very much. I think this is what I can say for now. Uh, thank you also, Stefano. Thank you with your team. It was also very interesting. You know, all the webinars we had, the possibility to interact with one another, to go back to reflect, to pick some important documents and policies to read in order to you know understand how things function. I think it has been an eye-opening. Thank you very much, and uh, God bless all. 
Thank you very much, Max. And uh, on uh, yeah, uh, it, it's interesting to hear about the uh, the attractiveness and the engagement that uh, the the um, the platform has generated. I think this is also very important from uh, from our side. Uh, maybe uh, continuing on uh, on uh, West Africa, we would like to maybe give the floor to Father Sonny and hear from Liberia and from the Liberian perspective. How did it look like? And also, uh, I mean, we are also in parallel as well working with the government uh, of Liberia, and uh, we know it is a heavy reform process that is uh, ongoing. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, I would not say starting from scratch, but starting from not that much, so to say. And uh, so I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's also an interesting and probably thrilling time for the TVET system uh, in the country. So maybe some reflections from your side, Father. Good morning to all of you. Um, I'm happy that I have been able to attend this program. And uh, it was more of, a, as was already mentioned, something which was uh, enabling uh, self-reflection a reflection on our context and our engagement. And the program itself was uh, uh, something very enriching personally for me because, uh, and one of the things that I have come to realize is that we do a lot of things and uh, many of the things that were discussed, many of the things that were, uh, that were uh, included in the program is already being done in different ways. But our problem basically is that we have no systematic structured approach to any of these. We do a fist and starts, maybe what needs to be done at the end is done first or uh, what needs to be done first is done somewhere else in between. So that is a kind of a way in which quite often we operate and therefore we don't always get the result. So that is one of the points of reflection that I, I came across during the process of uh, this uh, program. Secondly, I also personally believe that we have been, at least from our context here in, our, in uh, Liberia, we have been quite engaged with the government. And I realize that uh, government, the private sector, the NGOs, uh, the in individual institutions have an openness to collaborate. And there is also a certain amount of, uh, uh, it is a difficult context in many ways because of lack of capacity and uh, uh, there in capacity from many perspectives, from the perspective of skills, also from the perspective of uh, human capacity, uh, finances and uh, resources are limited. So there are many different uh, factors playing it and therefore it makes it difficult. But I think sometimes the difficulties are also what uh, unites us because we realize that we can't get everything done and therefore we need others. And I think that is uh, dynamics that is to some extent playing in, uh, in uh, Liberia. And I hope that there is a lot of engagement that is taking place now that will yield a better result. Honestly saying, I found it a little difficult in, the, in following this course uh, because uh, I personally wear many hats, many responsibilities at the same time and therefore to be able to find consistently the time in order to be able to give that uh, that time to do it effectively was a was a challenge for me. Sometimes some of the assignments, etc., was done in few minutes or few hours in order to to meet. Sometimes I did it for the sake of fulfilling a responsibility, so to say, of because I uh, became a part of it and I have an opportunity, so I don't I didn't want to let it go and therefore trying to pursue and complete that. Sometimes there is a it would have been much more, um, much more effective or a, a bit more deeper reflection, at least in my personal case, would have taken place if it was a, a course which would have taken me out of this context, meaning to say, uh, set a time aside only for this, then probably it would have uh, helped uh, a lot. Uh, as uh, Max already mentioned, the, uh, the program is very engaging and very practical, and it is a it's something that uh, we can, without too much of a technical know-how, etc., to be able to to interact with and to be to be able to benefit from. So that is, uh, of course, there are some connectivity issues, etc. Others also might have faced, which we often experience. But for the rest, I think uh, this one. And I want to thank uh, 
IBCILO as well as uh, DB Tech Africa for uh, making this opportunity available for us. And uh, these are the only opportunities that sometimes some of us will uh, get to be able to uh, to equip ourselves a little more to be able to facilitate this form of uh, reflection. So I want to thank and I thank also all the participants because their contribution and their reflection also makes us think and to be able to think from different perspectives. So uh, that's what uh, my comments are um, regarding this program that I was fortunate enough to be part of. Thank you very much. Thanks to all. Thanks, uh, thanks, Father Sonny. And uh, yeah, I think it's also interesting, uh, you know, sometimes we put ourselves in those shoes of those uh, who, uh, I mean, we, uh, we, we work for, you know, sometimes we, we have, we, we say, we tell the youth, you know, you need to continuously train you, you know, lifelong learning is fantastic. Lifelong learning is key lifelong learning. And then of course, lifelong learning comes with problems, <laughs> you know, wearing several hats is clearly one of them having not enough time, etc. So this is also, I think, very interesting. And uh, also myself, when I am a student in courses, I, I also now empathize a bit more also with, uh, with the participants of my own courses. So I think this is also very interesting. And then, yeah, Father, as, as you were saying, I mean, uh, there are not so many opportunities to have a specific training on Tibet, because this is also something that uh, is not very available uh, in our uh, maybe um, everyday life. So I think... Uh, this is really a, a big, uh, a big um, shout out to uh, to Don Bosco Tech Africa also for organizing this kind of program. Uh, I would like now to go a bit south and uh, to give the floor to Tendai, who was also very active uh, during our course, and uh, maybe having uh, Tendai's views on uh, on the course and how and how you feel. Uh, uh, this course could be helpful in your context. Hello, Stefano. Hello to everyone. Thank you so much for opening up the floor. Um, for me, the course in itself was one that was much needed. As mentioned before by the others, um, it was a an, an very introspective experience. Um, it was quite intensive, but it was necessary so that, you know, you could really get to the core of trying to understand all the systems. And also, I appreciated the fact that it not only forced us to look within, but also to look around and see what are the available resources that we have? What do we actually have in our position that we can mobilize and make our situations better? And also, I appreciated the fact that we had quite a lot of engagement, um, not only during the webinars, but also on the forum discussions and in the groups. And I, I noticed that sometimes, many times, we, we tend to feel isolated in our various corners where we are doing our work, you know, whether in different countries, regardless of the economic situations. And so you may feel like you're struggling on your own, but then when you begin to open up and have a platform where you can discuss different things with other people, you find that, oh, but you know, this is a shared problem. And then you, it begins to make you feel like, okay, this is something that's not just our own baby to, to deal with, but it's something that is, there's a commonality. And you, I, I, was, I was really appreciative of that. And also I'm very happy to hear that um, we have access to all of the resources that you had prepared for us. Um, for as, however long we, we wish to be able to have access to them. And I think this is very, yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful. It's been great. And also even the tech support behind when we have, whenever we're having challenges with assignments, with submissions, you know, the team, Lana, Vera, and yourself, Stephanie, you're always there to be of assistance. So a big thank you to you as well and to everyone for all that was contributed and shared. Uh, thanks, Tendai. Thanks. Uh, I think this uh, this is really one of the of the key messages. No, look uh, inside, and also I, I heard from uh, Father Sonny and uh, Father Max also about the terms of self in terms of self reflection, 
and looking at what uh, at what we are doing, but also at the same time look outside. And I think this is very important. And uh, also because for the nature of the work that the Tivet Center is doing, actually looking outside is probably the most important things because uh, you know you're you're looking at what are the needs in the labor market, you're looking at what are the needs in the society, what are the the let's say the aspirations of youth. And you are looking also at what is happening at political and policy level. So I think this is, uh, of course, something that we are looking at very in a very important uh, way. Maybe uh, going to Ethiopia, there were several people, of course, very active. I would uh, maybe give the floor to Surafel, maybe to have a perspective also. I know, Surafel, you have been involved as well in the JSO uh, process. And so maybe having a, a little bit of a connection between uh, uh, the work of the JSO and the JSO quality manual, et cetera, and how does that fit into what we have discussed and what uh, uh, we have, um, uh, let's say, on the content and topics of this course and how the two are, uh, let's say, uh, um, together in, in advancing the, um, let's say, the agenda of, uh, of Tibet uh, in your country uh, specifically. Uh, thank you, Stefano, for giving me this chance. Uh, also, I would like to thank Dibitec for giving me and all of us giving us this chance. Uh, well, uh, uh, to the course, uh, I would say uh, I see it like there are two important things that I observe in the, in the course. One, the content. The content you choose is very interesting. I really like that. Uh, it helps the Tibet Center uh, to systematically follow up and help the continuous improvement of Tibet uh, management. Uh, the other issue uh, I would like to mention is the methodology you use. There were meetings. There were uh, presentations, videos, and all this approach really was interesting to me, and it was very proactive. Uh, the other issue is the sharing. You know, there are uh, 90 participant, uh, participants, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and the sharing between the participants was very interesting and very enlightening. Uh, beside that, you know, as you were mentioning also, I was uh, part of the people who were in the formation of the JSO manual. So I believe JSO activity is part of the TVET activity. It should be one of the integral part of TVET's activity. And uh, we are also lobbying and enforcing with TVET deans and management that JSO activity should be part of the management, TVET management. Because at the end of the day, we provide training and after the training, we have to follow our students and JSO is a accompaniment of young people uh, when they are at school and also following their progress. So we, we were saying lifelong learning. So this component is very important for JS also. So uh, the courses were really enlightening. Uh, it gives us a lot of uh, information, knowledge, tools that we can use and it touches very important components that are our TVs are trying to try and continuously to improve the management issue, the financial issue, and the futuristic issue of green TV. So in our context in Ethiopia, we are the government policies are also in line with these components, lifelong uh, learning, uh, green TV are the principle, the strategic principles of uh, the country's strategy. So uh, the exposure we get from this training uh, really, really, really will help us to uh, prioritize our problems and go on applying what we learn from these courses. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Rafael. I think uh, two points that you have mentioned uh, caught my attention. On one side, of course, the link with JSOs and the important role of JSOs in the management of the centers. I think that a lot of the things that we have said, uh, let's say linking with the private sector, linking with information 
coming from the labor market, et cetera, are already part of the JSO's, uh, uh, let's say, uh, job description. And I think this is particularly important to put JSO's within these uh, broader uh, management issues. Yeah. And the second is, of course, about e-learning. So I think it, it is important also, maybe from, uh, from our point of view, to encourage you to plan for e-learning not only because of COVID, but also because e-learning gives you an enormous uh, uh, potential impact in terms of outreach. So I think this is also something, and uh, of course, participating in e-learning is a first a good step in order to try to design uh, uh, e-learning uh, activities for your TVET centers. I do think TVET is going to be more and more digital in the future. And uh, of course, uh, it will be blended in the sense that uh, some uh, activities are going to happen in the online world and others, of course, are going to be uh, in the school or in the workshops. But uh, clearly, this is the trend that we are observing at, uh, at global level. And so I think this point is also uh, a good point that you made, uh, Surafel, about, uh, about participating in the training. I would like maybe to give the floor to uh, a couple of more people if uh, someone wants to uh, to give uh, his or her final, uh, let's say, reflections. Please feel free to take the floor. Okay, if there are no more uh, voices, uh, maybe I would just like to uh, conclude with uh, some uh, perspectives. So uh, one of the things that we would uh, encourage you to do is uh, now at the beginning of the year to um, do some follow-up activities on the center, in the center. So on one side, there are, I imagine, several topics, several ideas in the assignments, but also in the forums, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, have been said by the people of your center. The good idea of Don Bosco Tech Africa of having more people from each center involved in the same training is also to try to stimulate a center-wide uh, kind of uh, reflection. So what we would encourage you to do is at the level of the participants of the training to try to come together, bring together, define some actions out of the training that needs to be, need to be implemented. I think this is key in order not to uh, lose momentum, but also at the same time, as Vera was saying, to try to transfer into practice the knowledge that we have acquired. And then the second is probably, depending on the schedules that you have in your center, is trying to create, to cascade these trainings. So trying to uh, really uh, maybe organize a series of meetings with the rest of the TVET Center staff. And I think this is also uh, very, very important uh, in terms of uh, uh, how you can then create an opportunity uh, for other people to benefit from the learning that you had. So this is, uh, I think, very important. And then, of course, the second perspective is something that uh, Father TJ has already spoken about, is the fact that we are going to organize training of trainers later in the year. So the idea is, as Father Sonny would say, to take some of you out of your responsibility and bring you physically in uh, some place and do uh, this training. Because as, as it was uh, also said by, by some of the people that we have heard today, this is a training that you should be able to then give to other people in the Don Bosco world in your country. So what we have foreseen together with Don Bosco Tech Africa is to support you in developing a face-to-face -face training on those same topics to, uh, let's say, replicate this training uh, in, in your countries and in your provinces. The idea from our side as a UN agency is to create a sustainable 
let's say, perspective. So we don't need to be involved for every course in every province. What we need, and it, this is our also developmental objective, is to have a core group of people which can convey those messages and can create a critical mass towards the improvement of TVETs uh, in Africa. So this is the, the, the activity that is going to happen. We have a final French cohort that is starting soon, and then we will have those uh, uh, training of trainers uh, sessions uh, at Don Bosco Tech Africa level. So uh, some of you, of course, will be uh, invited uh, to, those, uh, to those trainings, and we will be there uh, in order to support uh, uh, this preparation. So I think that uh, we have covered a little bit what we had uh, for this uh, graduation ceremony. Uh, we would uh, maybe once again uh, uh, thank uh, Don Bosco Tech Africa for organizing this training. And uh, really it is important also to thank all of you uh, who have participated very actively in the training, who have achieved your certificate be it a certificate of participation or a certificate of achievement. But really, I think it's, uh, as, as Father Sonny was saying, it's heavy because you have all other responsibilities. You have to carve out some time to do it. At the same time, you feel it interesting and you want to do it uh, in a proper manner. So it's really, I mean, uh, your, uh, we would like really to, to uh, to give you all our, uh, let's say, respect for the time that you have dedicated, the effort that you have put in this, uh, in this course. It was really a pleasure from our side uh, to create and develop the content for, uh, for this course, but at the same time also to organize and uh, manage <coughs> webinars and work on this assignment, et cetera. So I think it's really, really important uh, really for, uh, for us to continue advancing the TVET agenda uh, in all over the world and in particular in Africa. And thanks to Don Bosco Tech Africa for this wonderful collaboration to try to uh, really to move uh, uh, the chains, I mean, to continue, uh, to continue working on that. Vera, please. Um, sorry, Stefano. I just uh, thought it would be fair to, to mention that uh, Michael, uh, Michael Quadro, bravo, uh, also will receive a certificate of achievement because I, checked once again, and he indeed has a 100% progress. It was a technical program probably because um, analytical uh, learning and analytical provided um, that information. So congratulations, My Michael. We had okay. to do it officially <laughs> as well for him. <laughs> okay, great. Congratulations to all of you, to all of us. Thank you. Great, so thank you very much. Uh, I don't know uh, from uh, Nairobi, maybe you want uh, some, um, uh, final uh, to give some final uh, remarks and uh, and greetings. Uh, thank you, thank you, Stefan, for the Stefano for the let's say for the um, whole organization of uh, this uh, for the whole organization of this graduation ceremony. Thank you very much for that and. Uh, we are, as you mentioned, really going into the preparation part of the uh, French group that is coming up. Uh, we are already nominating uh, people from the different uh, centers. Uh, this, with that um, group, we should be reaching close to 400 participants, 400 participants with all the four groups together. So that will be something great. And another reason why we have selected something like uh, four people from every training center was also that, um, you know, in the solution world, we have quite a lot of transfers. And uh, we really wanted to make sure that even if transfers are made, we still would have at least one or two people who have undergone this training to be in at least one of the, in any of the training centers at one time. So that's why we have uh, sort of chosen uh, four from every training center. And later on, we also opened it up a little more to prospective 
people who could be in uh, the training center. So that's how we have uh, gone with this course. So we really hope that um, the training that uh, you have received will enhance the quality of our training. Uh, we really hope that uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of young people are going to benefit from what we have done. Uh, we are also very grateful to Don Bosco Mondo and to the German government for the project, uh, the project of the global program that has enabled us financially to organize these programs. So a big thank you to them as well. Uh, so finally, what I have got to say is the ball is in your court, all the participants. It's up to you to bring the knowledge that you have gained, the skills you have gained to the young people. And uh, by enriching their lives, I think you are enriching your lives as well. So once again, thank you very much. So thank you very much also from our side and really uh, congratulations uh, once again. We will uh, do all the checks. Please uh, uh, write also to the skills development uh, email if you have any doubt and uh, uh, we will keep in touch also and we will see also, uh, we will meet with some of you also during the training of trainers uh, session. So uh, uh, thank you very much for being with us and uh, uh, have a nice uh, rest of the day and of the week. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.